Sammy Kaola. I'm a journalist at WHYY. I covered gun violence prevention. I'm here as part of the Credible Messengers Project through the Philadelphia Center for Gun Violence Reporting. And I'm here with longtime activist Jamal Johnson. Jamal, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, my name is Jamal Johnson. I'm an anti-gun violence activist here in Philadelphia. I uh, am out here doing some other activity to try to address this bring it to the attention of not only the political figures, but also the community. And my goal right now is to try to minimize this gun violence that's going on in our city as much as possible. Why are we here in this spot today? Unfortunately, uh, two young people were killed here last night. Uh, they were one out of five that were killed last night, out of a total of 25 that were shot last night. And what I do and others is we go to the site of the homicide preferably the day after. And we try to bring attention since it's raw to the community. We let them see that there are people who are concerned and also try to influence them to try to do something after we leave. How long have you been doing this work? I started uh, walking the streets of Philly with billboards about five years ago. And about two years ago, I started asking for some inclusion from other people. And so I say that right now doing this this way has been going on for about two years. What's been your experience being out here? Who interacts with you and what do you think the impact has been? Well, every, I think that uh, depending on who comes out here, there's been the politicians who come out, community people have come out, uh, various organizations have come out and supported what, what we do. Um, ultimately, it's about the community. The community is not coming out enough. And I'm very uh, dismayed about that. But, you know, I continue to come out in the hopes that eventually it'll light a spark. And people will start to come out and say, look, we don't want this. We'll protest this gun violence and do efforts to try to eliminate it or minimize it as much as we can. Now, obviously, gun violence has been rising in Philadelphia for longer than the last two years. But it's gotten especially bad in the last two years. What do you see as some of the driving factors behind that spike? Well, I mean, like people have said a million times, you know, there's so many factors, poverty, disillusionment, disillusionment, uh, lack of finances, you know, you can name a plethora of reasons why it's happening. The bottom line for me is it is happening and we need to address it. And people out here better than me that know why it's happening. They have the resources to try to do something about it. And my only question is, why in all these years, especially the last two, it doesn't seem to still have any effect. Yeah. Yeah, what's what's not happening the way that it should be? What's um what's in place but not effective? I think I think what's not happening is and it's very easy. All you have to do is look at COVID. All you have to do is look at the opioid crisis a few years ago. And the kind of action that the, the mayor and the citizens took to those two crises. They're not doing that for this. You know, I'll give you something very, very simple. We had PSAs about the COVID crisis all the time. When the opioid crisis was happening, they had PSAs about the opioid crisis. There are no PSAs about gun violence at all. There's nothing out here to encourage the community to get involved in this fight against gun violence. Well, not, come on the onus of everybody in their own neighborhood. Exactly. And, and not only that, but the political, I mean, Mayor Kenny has basically checked out as far as in, in addressing gun violence. The city council obviously don't have a good enough relationship with him to make him do his job. As a result, we're left out here to do the job of all of them, which is what we're trying to do with meager resources and minimal urgency on, any, on anybody's part, frankly. How many days a week do you usually have to do this? Well, you know, there's no set pattern, but I would say last year I did about, I was, with no kidding, I think I did about at least 250. You know, maybe, maybe 200, 200 to 250. This year so far, I think we've been out here about 100, maybe about 75 to 80 times at least. And, and, and that's, you know, that's just thinking off the top of my head. You know, today they had four homicides. Obviously we can't be, I mean five, we can't be at all five places at the same time. So I try to pick the latest one 
and appear there, you know. And as you can see, the community sees us out here. The only thing is they're not acting to join in. And that's my thing, to motivate them somehow to join into the fight. When you think about a Philadelphia without gun violence, what does that look like to you? Like, what's in the vision for that? It looks like probably a year or two after the gun, the gang war crisis was going on back in the 70s. And I was a part of that back in the day in reference to trying to mediate it and, and we finally resolved it. I mean, there are always going to be homicides in Philadelphia. We're not going to be a homicide-free city. But the randomness and the callousness of the homicides that are happening now with pregnant women and children, this is just, this should not be common. You know, this, this should not be tolerated. And the fact that people are comfortable coexisting with this violence, I mean, I, I, I just can't fathom it. And that's why I'm out here. How does it affect you to follow all these shootings, to be out here every day, to be having this way on you? What, what does that feel like? How do you process that? Well, you know, I'm prior military, and you know, that exposed me to death and things like that. But it's sad when you come across uh, an area where a child has been shot at, or a pregnant woman has been killed and her baby. You know, it, 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 it has, it can't help but, you know, people use the word traumatized, I try to avoid it, but you can't help but be traumatized by all this violence, whether it's happening to you or not. My family has experienced it, so of course I've experienced it. But the thing is that until it motivates us to get out and do things, you know, we can talk about the trauma all day long. We need to use the trauma to help us, not hurt us. What gives you hope? Hope for me is somebody like right over there, that councilwoman right there. Somebody that's up there in the big house trying to fight for us to do what we need, get us the resources we need to do something about this problem. But when if, she, if she's not available, then there's almost no hope. Because who else are we going to go to if everybody's shutting the door on us and leaving us out here? If I'm somebody who lives on this street or any street affected by gun violence in Philadelphia, what can I do? Day, tomorrow, walk you. out your door, walk around your neighborhood, let people see you on a consistent basis so that those guys who are running around here shooting people, once they know that there's possible people around, I think it's a deterrent. I think it's a deterrent. It doesn't cost you any money. All it takes is a little time. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about that I didn't ask you? Yeah, I want to talk about the fact that we all have got to urge the community to get involved. This is not going to be done without the community. We are not looking for the mayor, city council, the governor, anybody else to solve this problem. They have to help us. But we have got to take charge of this problem to get out of here. We cannot think we're going to have a summer better than last summer while we got people dying on the streets five at a time. we got to get involved. Everybody has got to get involved, especially those who have been tasked with this problem and are being paid to solve this problem.